Hello, everybody. My name is Darwin Argetta. And this just in, forums are cool. On a more serious note, let's get started with this species presentation. <clears throat> with species presentation, I decided to go with the species Globigerina buloides. All right. Here's an image of the organism. By the way, it is part of the phylum forums, which we all know are spherical in shape, and I have that snail-like structure. So this will be um, not exactly that description, but somewhat close. So just like the forums, it has the thread-like pseudopodia that we can all see here as almost like needles, you could one would say, so that are coming outside these um, spheres that are in here. And another observation that you may notice are these two other spherical balls that are right here. And these are actually its daughter cells, which we will talk about later on in the presentation. And just to point out, this has its shell. It's actually made out of <coughs> calcium carbonate. Here's a world map, and that will show you where this organism lives and where there are higher concentrations of this organism. So, Bobigerina buloides is actually an organism that lives in the oceans. To be more specific, it lives in the bottoms of the ocean as it is a benthic organism. It dwells on the sea floor. Okay. So it is found in almost all oceans. They are really versatile. They are able to live in different salinities and at different temperatures. But they do live in certain places with higher concentrations. And I'll show you where that would be. They most, there's a very high concentration of these organisms in the 40 degree north latitude, which would be more or less around here to the 70 degree north latitude, which is right here. So this organism lives almost in all the oceans, but there are higher concentrations in this general area right over here. <clears throat> and of course, that's not including the land mass, it's just the parts of the ocean and the ocean floors. And at this latitude, it's more in the temperate zones. Here we have the tropic zone, and it's going to be slight uh, above above it, and it's going to reach almost to the polar caps, which is we all know it's cold. So the temperature that they live between in is <clears throat> about zero degrees Celsius, which is about freezing, to about 20, 21 degrees Celsius. So they do live. The high concentration of them do live in cold, cold waters. Up next, we have the Linnaean classification. As mentioned before, I said it belongs to the forums. So as a smart student you are, you knew that it was a type of protist, which is a eukaryotic organism. So we'll begin with the domain, which is eukarya kingdom, protista, phylum, formifera, or as others might want to call it, forums. And the part that you might have not have known might have been the class order family which is a little complicated, but we'll get through it. Class, Globotalania, order, Globigerinidia, family, Globigerinacea, genus, Globigerina, and the species, which is just a genus with a specific epithet name, Globigerina buloides. All right, <clears throat> moving on with the phylogenetic tree of the organism. Okay, so for the phylogenetic tree, I decided to use two trees this first one that you see here uh, is going to be the zoomed out version of the phylogenetic tree or a more broad phylogenetic tree. I just used this image so you guys <clears throat> would see where this organism would fall under and just know where it would fall under before we get into specifics or to the zoomed in version of the phylogenetic tree. So here we have the phylogenetic tree of the protist and here are the four supergroups. As we all know, here we have the Escovada clade, the SAR clade, the Archipelasida clade, and the Uniconcentrate uh, clade. 
Okay, as mentioned before, <clears throat> Globigerina buloides is a type of forum, so it would fall under here on the SIR clade. Next, we'll have the zoomed in version of the phylogenetic tree. And here it is. So all these organisms that you see here are in the forum, will fall under the forums. And conveniently, our species that we're looking at today is gonna to be right over here, Globigerina buloides conveniently at the top. Here we see the relationship it has with other species of the same genus and some other ones that are not the same genus. So here in this phylogenetic tree, the closest organism to Globigerina buloides is gonna be this one right here, Globigernella siphonifera. Here we can see that they share the most recent common ancestor and this is how they may, well, these organisms are all somewhat similar, but they just have a few differences which place them in, in these different categories right over here. Last but not least, we have the life cycle, which is uh, not that complicated for this organism. So this Globigerina buloides does reproduce both sexually and asexually. And before we get into too much detail about this, I wanted to clear up some vocabulary terms. The sexual uh, generation of this organism are called the agamont generation, and the asexual generation of this organism is called the gamont generation. <clears throat> Both these processes are somewhat similar, just the only difference is gonna be seen at the end, which is the outcome. Why don't we begin with sexual, uh, the life cycle, sexual life cycle, sexual reproduction. Okay, so once this organism has reached a certain maturity, the cytoplasm uh, withdraws back inside its test or its shell, as others might want to call it. And once there, it undergoes meiosis, where it produces haploid cells. Now, these haploid cells are then secreted outside the organism where they lay, later fertilize with another haploid cell from a different organism which fertilize and produce the zygote which undergo several rounds of mitosis to produce another organism. In the asexual reproduction cycle, the same process happens. The cytoplasm withdraws back inside the test or the shell but this time, instead of going under meiosis, it produces daughter cells via mitosis. So they're genetically identical. <clears throat> and once these cells undergo mitosis and start reaching a certain size, they start to, almost similar process to budding, they start to fall off of the organism to a point where they are, they're growing enough in size where they just fall out and become their own organism. <clears throat> and that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.